Hey guys, this is Colby. Uh, today I'm going to show how to uh, set up particle emitter for your lightsaber. Uh, this is my last video on this was about how to make a Jedi, how to make a lightsaber. Uh, today I'm going to show how to actually emit particles whenever you animate your lightsaber. This and it hits an object and uh, to have it emit particles. So let's get started. So let's say you're in a new scene. I'm going to delete this starting cube. I'm going to create a plane for our ground. Uh, that's where our particles will basically destroy on hit whenever they uh, die. They're like physical particles that will bounce off the ground or actually stick. In this case, they're basically just going to float in the air and then die off. So I'm going to create Shift A, create a plane, scale it up, press S to scale up and drag up with your mouse. We'll create a new object, or Shift A, and this will be our impact object. Uh, this can be whatever you want uh, for your scene. It doesn't have to be a cylinder, but in this case, I'm just going to use this because it's uh, it's not completely flat. It's just rounded on each side, which makes it a good impact test. So now we're ready to import our uh, lightsaber into our scene. In this case, I'm going to go to File, Append. Uh, I'm going to select the folder that has my lightsaber object in it. Uh, this can be any folder that you created that just has it. It doesn't really matter where it is. Uh, just, I know it's right here in my Jedi folder. Uh, I'm going to click on the scene that it actually has right here. And then click on object. And I have a couple of lightsabers here. I'm going to pick just this one. It's in our scene now. You can see it. You can scale it up. Press S and scale up. I'm going to turn on Bloom. I'm going to go to the settings here uh, under Render and turn on Bloom. So that way when we go to a rendered view, uh, it'll basically glow like this and actually look like a lightsaber. But other than that, we are done setting up our lightsaber in our scene. So now it's actually time to create an emitter object that will emit particles uh, once we animate the lightsaber to basically make contact with this cylinder here. And uh, this is also a good time to just go ahead and save your file. Press Control S or just press File and go to Save. Uh, you can name it whatever you want. So anyways, let's uh, go ahead and create an emitter object. So make sure that on your lightsaber, your textures are already made. I made a video on this, that uh, my last video to show how to make a lightsaber showed how to do all this. So if you haven't watched that, you can go back and watch it now. Uh, for this, I'm actually just going to rename it to Saber. And so uh, I know it's green, and this is the hilt. So now, press Shift A. Let's create a mesh. Uh, for this one, I'm just going to create a small plane. I'm going to scale down a bit. Press S and move it right about here, where you want the lightsaber to actually make contact. I'm going to rotate it. So press R and then Y and then 90 to kind of make it flat with the cylinder. Uh, you can go into edit mode on the new plane that we just created. And I'm going to press 2 on my keyboard to grab some edges. I'm going to grab this edge and then just kind of move it uh, towards the right. So G and then Y and then move it to the right. And do the same for this one but towards the left. So G and then Y and then move it to your left. If you want, you can right click on the plane and press subdivide. And click on this button right here. And this will increase the number of subdivisions on our plane that we just created. Uh, you don't want to add too much, but this is good enough, I'd say. You like two subdivisions. Grab uh, the edges on this side and this side. Make sure you're still in edge mode. So press 2. I'm going to press Shift and Alt. And click on this set of edges here. And do the same on this side. So Shift and Alt. And then press G and then X and then move it inward towards the cylinder. This will create a rounded surface for our uh, particles to emit from so that way they don't just come all straight like directly like a flat surface. They won't look super realistic. Since our cylinder is curved, uh, that also means that our particle emissions should be curved as well. I'm going to make a small animation for our lightsaber here. Uh, so go to keying and then press lock, rot, and then scale. And click on this one. Uh, that's basically what each of those 
uh, keys stand for. So it's a location, rotation, and scale. And drag your timeline. So drag this little arrow here, drag it up so you can see it a little better. Uh, press I to keyframe it. This will be your starting position for your lightsaber. So I'm going to set it pretty much like right here. Press R, and then Y, and then Y again on your lightsaber, and that'll rotate it basically on this axis. That's where we're going to be swinging. We'll basically hit the cylinder just like that. We'll start from here. Just press I. That'll be our first keyframe. I'm going to duplicate this keyframe. So click on it. It should be yellow when you highlight it. Press Shift D to duplicate. And then move it forward on your timeline here. Just to give it some initial resting animation. Uh, you don't want to instantly animate it. It depends on where you animate it, I guess, uh, how far you are in your scene. But this, since this is a starting animation, I'm just going to keep it resting. So it sits still for 14 frames, and then we can have an anticipation pose. This would be basically have the lightsaber swing back just a little bit. Press R and Y and Y again. Move it backwards just a little bit like this. Press R. Or not R, but uh, I again to create a keyframe. And then finally create. We're going to create another keyframe right here with our lightsaber basically making contact with the cylinder. So press R and then Y and then move it all the way like this. Just where it's like making contact. Press I again to keyframe. So now we have a little animation for our lightsaber. Might slow it down a bit, so I'm going to drag this keyframe. This is our swinging phase, so we can extend this a little bit to slow it down. And press space to play our animation. And to make this look a little bit better, uh, it doesn't seem to accelerate right, so we can create a new window in our viewport here. Click on the top right here. And then drag towards the left. That'll create a new uh, window for our viewport. Click on this icon and click Graph Editor. It's kind of hard to see. It's very compressed. So let's drag this window and move it towards the left. And do the same here. And you should see arrows every time you drag something. So that way you know uh, which direction it's going to go in. And so space out our animation. So now, go ahead and press home on our keyboard, or your numpad, wherever it's at, on our graph here. It'll make it look a lot uh, easier to read. And we're going to basically drag this handle. This is the, uh, like our peak of our uh, animation. We want it to essentially accelerate. By default, I think it's something that looks like, it looks kind of like this. Like it doesn't really accelerate properly, so we just need to drag this towards the right. Press G and then X and move it towards the right. So now close your graph. You can click on this uh, icon right here. Just see your cursor turn to a crosshair shape. Uh, just click on this corner, drag towards the right, and that'll close this window. And now you can actually create some particles that'll emit from this object. So click on the, the emitter object, particle properties, click the plus sign. I'm going to name this Saber uh, Particles. You can name it wherever you want, just as long as you remember what it is. And when you play your animation, you'll see it's basically just a liquid kind of particle emission, which is not what we want. We want it to be a bit more of like a, a quicker, like sudden impact. It emits part, a bunch of particles in a short amount of time that kind of just float off in the air and then disappear. So I'm going to press Shift A, create an icosphere. This will be one of our particles. Let's scale it down. Press S and then S. Drag downward. And let's move it out of the way a little bit. We can actually just move it like under our plane so that way we don't see it. Let's make it a little bit skinnier and longer. Let's press S and then X, kind of like this. Let's add a texture to it. We're not actually going to add a texture, but we're going to reuse one of the textures that we already have for our lightsaber. 
It's my present green. That's my lightsaber uh, texture for my blade. Go into rendered or material view preview. Uh, press Z, and you can see it has the same texture as our lightsaber. You can scale it down quite a bit. It's a small particle, so there's gonna be a bunch of them. Uh, you don't, you know, it's basically just a little shape. It doesn't matter how detailed it is. Just press Shift D to duplicate it. Let's scale it down a little bit. And press Shift D to duplicate, and then make it a little bit larger, I guess, than these two. We're going to create a collection out of these particles. So I'm going to hold down Shift, click on each one, and let go of Shift, and then press Control G to create a new collection. And you can name it down here on the bottom left. I named it just Saber Particles. You can name this whatever you want, like something like photons, like green photon particles, or whatever you want. It doesn't really matter, just as long as you uh, know which collection that it is. So that's good. Uh, we can go back to our particle emitter. Let's click on it. Click back on the particle system and go to render. We want this to render as the collection of those particles that we just created. Let's click on collection. And then for this one, click on the saber particles. I created one earlier by accident. Uh, just click on whatever one that you just created. So now when we play our animation, we can see that our particles are these little green uh, photons that we just created. It's kind of hard to see because they're very small, but we can scale them up. Like this. They're still not in the right direction. They kind of just look, they should be rotated more outward. And they're also flowing uh, too much to gravity. We want them to kind of burst out and then uh, disappear. So to get the particles to go in the right direction, uh, we can go under collection here, click on object rotation, and that'll match the rotation of our original collection here. So now when they come out, they should be facing away from the cylinder. Uh, we can decrease the number of particles here to around maybe 250 and turn on the frame start or turn up the frame start to where it makes contact with the where the lightsaber makes contact with the cylinder if you go through your animation here uh, just press the left and right arrow keys to cycle through your animation and here my lightsaber makes contact on frame 26 so i'm going to set the start here to around 26 and set the end to 27 maybe, or 26.5. I must turn on the lifetime here. It's around 15. So now the particles come out in more of a burst. And kind of disappear. So I'm actually going to make some small adjustments to my emitter. I'm going to add some more uh, subdivisions. So that way the particles come out a little bit more curved. Because it when you and they emit, you can see that they're kind of spaced out like right here and right here. We want them to basically uh, emit kind of evenly. So we can go into edit mode back onto our emitter. Press Control R to add a new set of edges on each side here. And Control R on the right. Press 2 on the keyboard and then Shift and Alt. I'm going to drag this outward just to create a bit more of a curve. And same here. Shift and Alt. Press G and then like X. To move outward like this. So we put our animation now. These particles are a little bit more uh, evenly distributed. And I would say we could also maybe get rid of these side faces here since uh, the light zipper only really makes contact around this area. So these set of faces are kind of unnecessary. Press 3 and then Shift Alt and delete these faces. Press X to delete. Let's go back into our particle systems here, our settings, and then go down to field weights. And let's turn down the gravity quite a bit. 
So these particles kind of flow outward like this. We can increase the velocity. They come out at increase our normal velocity here. That will come out a bit faster. And I'd also recommend uh, increasing the velocity here and randomizing it so that way each particle kind of has its own individual velocity. It kind of burst out a little bit more randomly. Not too much, but. This is where tweaking your settings is a good idea. Uh, it might take some time to get the settings just right. So I'd recommend just going through these settings, customizing them how, to how you like. You can set the lifetime lower or higher. You can set the particles uh, to emit from the faces or vertices. I recommend faces. And you can increase the velocity to where it gets a little bit faster. Whenever you play the animation, they burst out. That's right, so finally, I'm going to go through and just kind of show some of the settings I have uh, and play my animation. You see it has a nice kind of random spread. I'd recommend turning on rotation here. Uh, this will randomize your each particle's rotation. Uh, you can randomize it as much as you want. I think that looks good enough. You can turn up the phase. You can decrease it. Uh, just tweak it to where it gets basically to how you want it to look. You can go up to scale and turn up the scale randomness. That way each particle has a slightly different size than the rest. So my gravity is pretty low. And I went through the velocity here and I increased it and also randomized it a bit. This kind of helps to have each particle look a little bit more uh, random. Like their speed is random for each one. I don't think increase, increasing the velocity uh, right here, so past one, it really makes a difference. So you can just keep it up at one. You can turn down the normal velocity from like five to one. Since the gravity is basically zero, uh, your particles won't really need to have a super high velocity. And then finally, uh, you can turn up the lifetime randomness so that way each particle has its own individual lifetime and they kind of fade out at different times, which looks a little bit better. If it's at zero, they kind of all disappear at the same time, which doesn't really look very good. So if you turn it up, they kind of fade out on their own. So yeah. Alright guys, that's the end of this video. If you have any questions, just leave a comment down below. I will do my best to answer them. Uh, sorry this one took a little bit longer. Uh, this video actually took a lot longer than I was expecting. Uh, I'll do my best to try to make videos like this a little bit shorter in the future. But anyways, uh, guys, thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time.